Welcome back and today we're going to continue our look at the Synology M2D18. It's the NVMe and SATA based SSD cache upgrade for your Synology NAS as long as you've got a, Nest, uh, a PCIe slot. So what we're going to do now is we're going to muck around and play around with our 35 gig of test files that we've used in all the other videos. We're going to throw it around the Synology NAS whilst we're going to let the SSD cache do its thing and then we're going to monitor how long it takes to perform all these actions. Then we're going to remove the SSD cache and run pretty much exactly the same test again just to see if we see a performance increase and how the system handles it so first things first I'm looking at the clock here I've clocked up about 30 seconds but don't worry we'll put a timer on this so straight away let's get moving there's our SSD cache 500 gig in read write cache and first thing we're going to do is start mucking around with our 35 gig of files and just start pasting the blighters everywhere I'm going to start really hitting this thing hard and start pasting those files in. So we're going to paste into those three directories. Up here, we can see the background tasks of all three of those. At the same time, I'm going to start running a virtual machine in the background. That's going to take two of the CPU cores and half of the memory away. So that VM is going to run there in the background while all this is going on. And again, we've got all those running there in the background and the SSD cache is already starting to clock things up. Um, let's see if we can get the resource monitor, even at a limited capacity, to give us real-time information. So I'm just going to pop the resource monitor over file station. And what we're going to see is how our system is going to perform with everything that's going on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to disappear. I'm going to leave this to continue doing what it's doing. I'm going to fast forward the screen and then we're going to get a good idea how long it took to perform these actions with SSD cache enabled. So, see you in a bit. I don't really know what comes next. I'm just doing my best, even though I'm so stressed out. Everything just feels like a test that I feel so depressed when I can't seem to get out. But something deep inside won't let me quit. I swear that I'm inspired by all this. by thirst i'm inspired by worth i desire your worst so you can just hide while i work i ain't tired you first i'll write a second third verse about the lies you go disperse you never did sh i know it hurts but something deep inside won't let me quit i swear that i'm inspired by all this sh by the VM. All of our resources are now available. There's our 10G of files ready to go, but this time we're going to remove the SSD cache. It will completely remove the SSD cache volume. Sorry for the break there in the video. Unbeknownst to me, I didn't realize that once you completely remove the cache, it makes well, there are main drive directories that it was working with unavailable temporarily while it moves data from the cached volume back onto the drive not to worry we're back into it there's our tent there's our files there's our 32 gig of files and what we're going to do is we're going to conduct everything single thing that we did before but this time without the aid of the ssd cache so let's get it all lined up there's the virtual machine manager again let's get that bad boy open and we're not going to run the virtual machine yet we're going to try to do things exactly as we did it before so as you can see the virtual machine is off there's our files no transferring, they're not in those directories, completely empty, as discussed before. And as you can see, SSD cache is not available. All we have is our volume. So, 
let's get moving on this shall we and we'll leave that there just to prove to you there's no SSD cache and let's get started so first things first we're going to copy our files and start playing merry hell covering our files all up in this biznet right let's go next paste in there we're going to power on our VM and finally we're going to get the resource monitor open get that open there so obviously the machine is going to have the tiniest bit of a freak out that we're doing all this at the same uh, simultaneously we'll hide that we'll hide that and we're going to let our test run here in the background so once again we are doing exactly the same test as last time and we are getting the same initial spike at the beginning until the, the system starts really struggling with the fact we've got all of these files running in simultaneously move that VM here so we can just see it's going there in case you're wondering this VM already we're seeing a larger increase in CPU consumption with that VM but it will dip because obviously the VM is booting up for the first time in case you're wondering it was a Windows 10 VM um, I would open it but I don't want to do anything that could jeopardize this test more than I already have done and what we're going to do we're just going to leave this and I'm going to fast forward the video and then we're going to compare the times um, and we'll see how they compare And we're drawing to a close. We're finally seeing these files be finished. We've got one pile, and it's starting to look like we're almost done here. And we're done, so all those files were sent over. And again, this is without cache, and you've probably got the clock there on the screen. The next test I'm gonna perform is, I don't know if any of the more astute of you noticed, but on this device in the storage manager, we've been working with the SSD, and now we're gonna move over to a hard drive so the next test is going to be the hard drive 4TB WD red and this file and we're going to do exactly the same test without SSD caching but this time just on a hard drive no SSD and all internal speeds so let's move over to that now um, first thing first let's start deleting all of our files that we've done before we've got to do a spot of housekeeping haven't we move there delete you delete you I'm saying all this and chances are I might have even cut all of this content that I'm talking but you know what stay with me who knows um, so what we'll do is we're gonna have to now create a, a brand new volume um, another storage pool using that um, extra hard drive space that we've got enabled inside um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set that up create our new volume and use that hard drive to start transferring our 35 gig over Okay, and now we're moving on to part three of our testing of the M2D18. Now what we've done now is we've completely removed the M2D18 cache card, and this time we're going to be utilizing the regular hard drive inside this NAS. Previous two tests were uh, performed on a Samsung SSD. As you can see here, it's around that 219 gigabits there on the SSD. And this time we're gonna be using a single hard drive, a WD4TB, without SSD cache. So again, we'll leave that there just to show that there's no SSD cache. We've made copies of all of our files. So over here, if we highlight if we highlight HD test, you can see on the screen there 3.49 TB. That's that WD hard drive, and these are the files we're going to be using. And in here was the test, uh, the files that we used from the previous test on an SSD. So what we're going to be looking at is firstly the kind of performance we're going to see without SSD cache working on just a hard drive. So let's copy the same tests as before so let's go let's start copying our files i'm going to copy that and we're going to bung it into this folder paste over right there then we're going to move it into this folder another copy coming on and we go back to the main folder again and then we're going to go into this folder more pasting going on there I'll go there, we'll power on our VM, just like last time. There's, as you can see, no SSD cache going on here. And we'll open up the resource monitor as well, so we can see everything that's going on. We'll pop that there on the screen, so we can see all the read-write operations happening right now. And at the top, we can see our background notifications of all the files that are being sent 
without SSD cache. So once again, we will leave this now and I'll fast forward the screen and therefore showing you just how long it took for this device to do these files. Okay, see you in so many percent time. Okay, well that's that completed, and as you probably anticipated, it did take a fraction longer than that of the SSD, with and without SSD cache. So what we're going to do now is we're going to conduct the same test that we just did, but this time we're going to use the hard drive and we're going to enable SSD caching with the card. So we'll keep you on the screen here. Let's go to create. We'll create our read-write cache here, once again, just like we did last time. Okay, so there's our SSD cache already sorted out for volume 2 in our SHR, and again, SHR2, I'm sorry, the SHR volume is on uh, volume number 2, this is our hard drives. So what I'm going to quickly do is start deleting all of those test files that we utilised in the previous test. While we're doing that, obviously the cache is going to react a little bit on the other side of the screen, but these are all the tests, the copies that we made during our non-SSD cache hard drive test. So there's our files and folders, let's get back to the main directory and once again for the last time, the fourth time, we are going to do the same test of copying these files into different directories with the VM up and running and we're going to take a look at the resource monitor. So let's get ready, the cache is ready to go as well, let's start the final stage of this test. So let's go, let's start copying these files in, next, paste, same again, go to this directory, paste, final directory, paste. Next we'll get our virtual machine running. Virtual machine there. Get that up and running. Power on the VM. Our SSD cache is probably going to blib and blob all over the place. And while that's all doing that, we'll get our resource monitor up and running too. So we'll get the resource monitor. And already the system's got quite a lot going on here as you can see. And during all of this, we're going to get our background test there, just showing what's happening in real time. So again, just like every other test, and in the final test now, uh, test four, we're going to just fast forward the screen and see how long it takes to copy these files to three different directories whilst the VM is up and running, this time on hard drives, compared to SSDs, and see how it compares without M the M2 D18 SSD cache card to see if there really is a performance benefit to utilizing this card for your hard drive setup. I'm sorry to be repetitious, but you've got to, I never know when you're gonna fast forward into this video. So let's fast forward the video itself and get to the end to see how long it took to do this. Okay, well that's completed and as you can see it was definitely quicker. How it compares against the SSD and indeed the SSD when it had SSD cache on a separate card remains to be seen. But if we combine all four results together we can get real time information about how the performance was and what was the best in terms of read and write. I think we all know the answer but let's move over to that now. Okay, where well, here are the test results from all four tests. Once again, as you can read from the top, this is the Synology M2D18 SSD cache test. I should probably mention as well, inside a DS1618 Plus, let's keep it thorough. And it was 35 gig of files of miscellaneous file types and codecs copied into three different locations in the NAS using whichever media we were, the volume we were using at the time. So SSD or hard drive, depending on the test. And we had a volume running, uh, a VM volume running in the background using half of the CPU power and half of the memory. So as you can see with our first test here, the one at the top, that was using an SSD inside the device without any cache. And, and all of that actions took 15 minutes and 33 seconds 
to do all three of those 35 gig file copies. Next, we did the same test as you can see using uh, the SSD cache. Once again, that was a couple of SSDs in a read write cache environment or RAID 1, um, and that resulted in 13 minutes. So, once again, even if you're using SSDs on their own, the cache was able to slice off a couple of minutes in the like, like testings. Next, we went to the hard drive volume, and this, of course, is where SSD cache is supposed to live in terms of budget and utility. To do all three of those copies with all the other actions took 38 minutes and 45 seconds. And once again, that was all internal NAS operations, no upload or download over one GBE. All of these were tests and all the read writes were done inside the NAS. So there is no bottleneck with regards to one or 10 GBE. And finally, if we utilize this card the way it was intended, so you've got the M2 SS, uh, NVMe cache inside the device uh, supporting the 4TB volume, what we ended up with is those same operations taking 23 minutes, a big, big change from those 38 minutes. And that's really the point of this card. I'm just gonna keep this highlighted. Because the reason you use SSD cache is because you're using hard drive storage, but you need faster operations. If you can afford to just fully populate your NAS with SSDs, go for it. Because I'm not gonna tell you that using the M2D18 in a NAS fully populated with SSDs will have any real world benefits. You have to remember these are a one-off test. Maybe if I'd conducted these tests several times, the results would have differed a few minutes either side. But for that reason, if you're using a NAS filled with SSDs, I don't recommend using this card. And why should I? If you've already got SSDs inside, effectively they've got better cache operations than anything else you're gonna do anyway. So anything else is just gonna be a minor bonus. That said, if you're using a Synology NAS device and it's fully populated with hard drives and you are looking for a big performance boost, then definitely this test, along with all my previous testing in the past, always thoroughly indicates that SSD caching, once done properly, will see tremendous performance benefits to your IOPS and internal operations. But nevertheless, this has been the end of these four tests of the M2D18 card and what it can do and what it can't do when you don't have one installed. If you are interested in getting hold of one, of course, visit the guys at span.com. Do find the more wordy version of these comparison tests and overall speed tests on NAS Compares. And finally, if you've got a question about these or want to see another test here on the channel, then do contact me via Twitter at RobbieOnTheTube. Thanks for watching.